Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Boost Say podcast. It's another one for this week, and I've been craving to get something opal. To that end, we've got Shanwell over here. What's up, Shanwell? How are you doing, Nebra? I'm very well, thanks. Your side, Jason? I'm doing liquor, man. I'm doing liquor. Um, I'm just glad to have you on this show, guy, because look from my side, Opal has got a, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Opal because my very, very first car was a 1992 Opal Cub. It was a little 1400, wasn't anything crazy. I mean, everybody wants it. I always wanted to be a super boss, but you know what it was to get back and forth to work. So it was for economy. So I'm just glad to have an Opal on the stream. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a privilege for me as well, you know. Yeah, it's liquor to it's have definitely you. a privilege for me. Thanks, man. I'm glad you're here. And you come recommended as well because I called you because someone else recommended you. They jumped into my DMs and said, listen, why don't you get a hold of Shanwell? This is his car. This is and I knew of the car and I've seen your car before. And I thought, it's going to be a good idea. So look, I'm just glad it's happening. So let's, let's talk about your car. And before we actually get into it, let's just actually show anyone that might, have, that might be on the stream now um, what your car, which car we're actually talking about. So I'm going to just bring this into the screen quickly. There we go. That's your baby, right? That's correct. Okay. So let's just break it down for me quickly. This car in its stock form, this is a 1992 model, uh, GSI. Yes, it's a big boss here. Yeah. Okay. 92 model. Okay. Awesome stuff. So when you, now let me just get away from this picture here quickly. When you got this car, right? Was it a, um, when people start drag racing or when they start racing cars, it's um, the car that they use is either because they've always had the car and they decided, look, let's just make this a race car, or they physically go out to buy a particular chassis and a particular motor. What was it like with this Superboss? Was it a car that you always had and you converted it into a drag racing car, or did you actually go out and pull this car for racing? Well, uh, I bought the car, it was just a shell. There was no interior. Nothing like that. I built the car up from scratch as a street car. And then it was my dream to race the car. And then I told my dad, hey, why don't we build something and see? Mm. You know, then the first time at the track, we built a few motors, of course. Came to the track, never had success. The first time we built a proper motor, you know, we were struggling because the car, was, car wasn't car was consistent, man, power-wise. Okay. And uh, then obviously Kilani made me fit the cage in the car and that's when I took it from the road. When I did 11.9, it was still a full car. And then I decided, you know what? I'm going to put the three-point roll bar in and from there I turned it into a race car. Okay, so you're saying that when you hit 11.9s, you didn't consider it a race car yet. It's also your daily, it's also a driving car. It wasn't really a race car. No, it wasn't a daily. Um, but it was my weekend car, you know, when the guys mm. get together, yeah. uh, the Opel group, and then I would drive the car around. Even after I did the 11.9, um, I would put my front seat back because it was still a full car with the three-point roll bar in. Okay. I would drive to hookups and stuff. Yeah. You know, and just enjoy the car weekends. Mm. So now it's at a point where you've done the roll cage, you've stripped interiors. We're going to get to that now. But now it, the car only comes out when it's going to go race. Is that correct? It's correct, yes, but I drive it often in the industrial area by us. Yeah, I play around with it at least once or twice a week. Okay, so give us a give us a breakdown of this car. I mean, I'm looking at the car now. Obviously, it's got street tires. It looks like semis that you've got on there now. Um, if you look at the front, I actually want to bring in a picture of the engine. There we go. So give us a breakdown from here, Shan. Well, what am I looking at here? What motor have you got in here? And give me talk to me about this engine. Well, it's a 2.4 liter uh, bottom end mm -hmm. from the Isuzu 2004 onwards. Yeah. They call it the Go Beat model. It's uh, from a KB240 petrol engine. Okay. With obviously uh, two liter rods, mm -hmm. uh, two liter oversized pistons, um, and then obviously the Superboss head with cams and throttles and things. Yeah. Okay, so the Superboss head is, um, out of the fact, it's a, it's a 16 valve head, right? 16 valve head, yeah. So now the 2.4 liter, the 2.4 liter bottom end was that sleeved? I re-sleeved it, yeah, because the pistons I had, uh, the standard size for the 2.4, the block I bought was standard. Mm -hmm. So obviously I couldn't just fit that pistons. I re-sleeved it, and we bought it back to 
uh, 87.5, okay. which was a piston I had bought already. Got it. And, um, and the head on the car, that 16 valve head that you've got, is there any sort of work done on that? Yeah, it's ported. Mm -hmm. uh, it was done on the mill. Mm -hmm. uh, ported and gas flowed. It's got oversized valves. It's got a rev kit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's got arm. Um, that's the fourth set of cams, I think. Oh, is the it? third imported set I've got in there. Okay. And as far as the reliability um, goes for the for the bottom end and the top end, I mean, what do you find? I know those ISUs, those 2.4 ISUs, they're basically bulletproof. You know, they take a lot of beating. You know, and uh, but with the, with the head and the block and that combination that you've got, what's reliability like? Well, um, I've got been running the car now with the fuel tank and that setup for three years. Mm -hmm. Same engine. I haven't refreshed the motor yet. Okay. Um, I can ask my tuner, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the motor's got about close to 300 dyno runs or more on already. Wow. Um, the car revs to 9,000. Um, I've never had a day's trouble with the engine itself. Okay, so the engine the engine itself is basically bulletproof. And revving to 9,000, that's actually that's pushing the motor pretty hard. Any idea what you're making on a dyno at the moment? The most I made at JVS was 223 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. And two around 285 newtons on his dyno. So other things that I'm just looking at, you've got the bracing over there. This battery that you've got parked at the back over here, what size is it? looks small. Is it a smaller than normal battery? It's a smaller than normal battery. Um, we were looking for a place to put the battery, and then my dad came up with this idea and we had an aluminium battery box made and fitted it in the wiper mm -hmm. panel. Yeah. And we fitted the battery there. So. Let me go back to this one over here. So, back on the outside again. In the front, so you've got the motor, you've got the grill. Of the, see, is that, the, is that your fuel tank in front over in the bottom left hand corner? Yeah, that's about a 11 litre fuel cell that was mm -hmm. built by Sean Zurich a few years ago. Yes, this is Sean Zurich. Look, I'm just going to tell everybody, let me just get back here quickly. Hold on. To everyone that's watching, right? I have asked Sean Zurich if you would like to be on the podcast. Um, he's, he's thinking about it. So I have asked because everyone is saying Sean Zurich's name has come up in every single podcast mm. so far. You know, he's always, he's got a lot of influence in the scene. He's got a lot of good advice and he's helped a lot of guys this cause. And he's just a little nice guy. So guys, I am trying. Maybe you guys should jump into his DMs and put a little bit of pressure on there maybe to get him in on the podcast sometime. I'm just going to put that out there. So, um, we go back there again. Before we go anywhere else, if we look at, um, you see, we're looking at. The, I'm looking at the windows, uh, sides, yeah. and front. Are you running? Are you running glass windows still, or is it uh, Lexan? The windscreen is glass. The quarters are glass, and then the door glass is uh, Lexan. It just looks like normal windows. Yeah, did you actually just fit it into the into the uh, into the existing rubbers? Yes, into the uh, existing rubbers, and I obviously just tinted it okay, with okay. a slight tint. Well done, but because you've got a lot of guys when they put those legs and they just they rivet it, rivet it in around the edge over there, so you can actually tell this just that's, looks like window glass, so it looks factory. It looks good. Yeah, that's the only reason I don't have uh, quarters in because I don't really want to rivet the car. Mm. Yeah, look, those doors even are cut up doors, but it's uh, spare doors that I have. All the original okay. panels are upstairs in the store. Okay, so you've still got the original panels. We're going to get to some of those pictures now. I just want to chat about, underneath. have you still got the bonnet frame in here? Is the full bonnet frame That's still in there? It's original bonnet still. It's still the original bonnet. Okay. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because if you want to drop time, I mean, obviously the easiest thing to do is just to start cutting on the scar, but it doesn't look like you want to cut in the scar. Well, uh, I'm at a point now where I am considering going to the extreme with the car. Okay. Um, I am at the point, but like I told uh, my dad, which helps me a lot as well, mm. uh, that I don't want to go too far because when I reach my goal time, I want to go turbocharged on the car. I see. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then I don't want the car too light. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, let me just see if we can, uh, let me just open up another picture here quickly. So if you're going to look at the inside here, so let's look at the interior. Here we go. Interior on the car. Now, I'd, there's not a lot of cars that have still got so, so much of the original parts still inside. So obviously the seats are gone. You've got the aluminum racing seat in there. But this entire dash is still here. 
Yes, the original engine loom is there still behind the dash. The original <laughs> lights loom, everything yeah. is still in the car behind the dash. Okay. The clock still works, all of those things. I've got all the vents inside there, everything. I must still strip it, man. Okay. So that is all still in there. So planning on keeping that. This is the rear uh, of the car. Yeah, you can see your um, you can see your cage that you and you only got a half cage in here. Yeah? I put off. I had a three point roll bar and I went the half cage. Yeah. Okay. So that's the your spare wheel. Well, at the bottom of that mat over there, do you still have that there? Um, that's not a mat. That's an aluminium sheet that we put over the well that we cut out. Okay, so the well is cut out and you put the sheet across the top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we cut it out, but we obviously put it in storage because I didn't really want to cut on the car, but you know what? I'm in this game now, so mm. Look, you stuff start, it. There's certain places that you're going to have to start, and once you start cutting, there's no going back. It's just about going faster and faster, and the, the cheapest yeah. mod is, one of the cheapest mod is, mods is just cutting away and saving weight. No, that's um, true. It's just... Me. We don't know where to scratch, man. <laughs> <laughs> scratch everywhere, but start someplace and just start scratching and see what happens. So we just um, okay. So obviously you're running the fuel tech management system. Yes. Are you are you happy with that system? I mean, all at the moment it's just controlling basically your engine. Your car's not boosted or anything yet, so you don't have to worry about any of those things. At the moment, it's just, it's I'm, just controlling your your oil pressure and your fuel. Yeah, yeah, Jason, I am so happy with that management day on saturday we drove the car for the first time after a long time mm -hmm. and then there was a bad fuel leak at the number one injector okay and then the ecu went to into safe mode and then it just cut the car out and basically saved so, you yeah no look at on kilani i raced a few times and then there was an injector problem mm -hmm. and then it just cut the car out they put the car in safe mode and yeah. it cut the car out so it saved my engine quite a bit <laughs> Okay, so we've spoken about we've spoken about with the engine, right? What type of fuel are you running? Look, um, I was on ethanol when I bought the car initially, and then um, when I raced in a mobile with ethanol, I was the, the only guy that lost. I lost the most power yeah. going from coast to altitude. Okay. And then um, one of my friends were running methanol here, and he ran methanol there, and he lost the least. So okay. when we came back, I decided to change fuels. I mm -hmm. didn't gain power going methanol, um, but I changed fuels. So if so you really need to go up there again, then you'd be okay. I went back there now last year, yeah. Okay. And the car made surprisingly a lot of power there. Okay, so, so fuel was a fuel was a big issue going up to altitude. Fuel was the issue, yeah. Okay. Fuel was the issue, even though I didn't gain on the methanol yeah. But it's only because the compression isn't accommodating to methanol yet. Hmm. I'm with yeah. You. So those are future plans, you know, is to pump the compression and still scratch with the cams and still a few things I'm going to do on the engine. Okay. The last time you were out with that car was it about a year ago? You were down at Kilani. What is what is your personal best with that car and that setup as it was in those pictures there? Look, uh, last year, March was my last, my first event for the year, uh, 2019, mm -hmm. in March last year, and my last event. And then I did 11, two 11 sixes back to back. Okay, so you backed it up? And, oh. Yeah, and then on the next run, I went off the track. Oh. Obviously, you know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, back, the back came around, Yeah. and I went off the track. Mm -hmm. And um, the damage, the mounting, the bumper, and things, yes, I could still drive, but I called it a day. So when the car went off, I'm not saying that this was the culprit, but what tires were you running on that car? Which wheels were you running front and were you running skinnies at the back? No, I don't run skinnies on the car. I have okay. got skinnies. I never, ever run skinnies. I run the original wheels at the back whenever I race. I just why? run my seats. Well, why? If I may ask, because a lot of the guys will put, say, will put their skinnies on the back if they've got them. Is there a reason that you haven't done that? Um, to be honest, Jason, uh, my car before the back brakes were also on the foot pedal, so it wasn't safe. Mm. Ah, you see, so I every see. time I would brake, mm. every time I would brake, then the, the wheels will lock up at the back and it will want to come around. I see. And then I take my foot off and brake, you know, yeah, almost yeah. like ABS, but manually. Yeah, manual and um, human controlled ABS. Yeah, something like that. And now I've taken the the, the Back brakes off the foot pedal. Now the car stops much better. Mm -hmm. I'll look into the skinnies, but 
like I told my dad, before I cut, before I go skinnies, mm. you know, that must be my last resort, man. Mm. I said to my dad, I want to see if I can push the car closer to the tins with the original rear wheels and things, mm. you know. So that is stuff I want to keep towards the end of my yeah. goal. Okay. So with that being said, you want to push closer to the tins. You're at 11.2 now. It was 11.6. 11 Eleven six. That's six. your personal best. Yeah. So, what do you with yeah. the setup that you have now? What are you going to do differently to the last run that you had last year? When the when the car comes back, are you doing anything differently to be able to reach the tens? What do you? What kind of modifications are you doing? Are you just looking for more seat time? What are you going to do to get there? Um, uh, the car was probably good for eleven three, like it was with the box we were running eleven four maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but. I said I'm done with that gearbox because okay. the gearbox caused me to break shafts, CVs mm. at every event I would break something, mm. you know? So it was frustrating because number one, you can't launch in first gear because if you launch in first, you can't get sick in a die RPM. Yeah. So then you're going to lose time having the RPM drop to under seven so you can engage second. Mm -hmm. So I decided to launch in second and uh, launching in second, at 8,000 RPM, which is my launch con where my launch control is set, the RPM would drop to under 6,000. So in the videos, you will hear the car bogging badly. Ah. And then it comes out of the bog. Uh -huh. So then we use second, third, and fourth gear only uh -huh. on the quarter mile. Okay. Um, so we, we went out, we took a break. We bought a box, a Coif gearbox. Nice. From the U Yeah, it arrived about almost two months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it, arrived, um, it arrived just before lockdown, so now the box is sitting there and you can't, you know, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything with it. Actually, during it arrived during lockdown, I was <laughs> privileged enough to fetch it nearly two months ago. Yeah. No, bro, privileged. No. I'll be sad. I'll be sitting there. I'll stay at this gearbox every night, knowing I can't do a thing with you until this lockdown is over. You see why I say privilege? We purchased it just before the rent fell. So, uh -huh. yeah, that is why I say probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. Um, yeah, now the only thing is to have uh, clutch centers made and then we can fit the box and do the testing. Okay, so basically, um, from where you were last year with an 11.6, the major, major modification is going to be changing that gearbox. And before you yeah. do anything else crazy, you want to see what kind of times you do with the new gearbox and just see how that improves. That's correct. Yeah, I said to my dad, I just want to do one or two events before mm -hmm. I strip the motor because I think it's time to refresh the engine as well and then do Three what years. I've been. Yeah. yeah, I said to my dad, then I've discussed look, I run cat cams in the car, I don't believe mm -hmm. in any other camshaft mm -hmm. because the two sets I've had in the car, I've gained on the intake, I've gained like 10 kilowatts at a time, mm -hmm. you know, so. I won't go to any other manufacturer for myself. Okay. Um, I spoke to them. I mailed them my proposed plans. Mm -hmm. And then we worked on something. And they came up with an idea for me for the future uh, for my upgrade. So, yeah, I'm going to go that route soon. Okay, cool. So, we chatted about – so, we were speaking earlier on about um, changing the back to skinnies and you removing the back brakes of the rear. What braking system are you running in that car? Well, I've obviously got the standard booster, mm -hmm. uh, standard rear brakes, and then I've got power brake discs in front. Mm -hmm. I've got four pot Wellwood calipers, mm -hmm. uh, Wellwood brake pads on there. Um, obviously, all those custom made brackets, custom made spaces and hubs and stuff. So, yeah, so it's got a, decent, a Wellwood braking system. So, it's a decent stopping setup you've got over there, so you don't have to worry about that. And suspension yeah. wires, front and back? Well, uh, to be honest with you, when I did the 11 6, I was still running standard struts. <laughs> okay. <front> and <laughs> yeah. and um, standard suspension at the back, just yeah. with uh, stuffer springs, 1,000 mm -hmm. pound springs I have in now. Mm -hmm. And then I had coilovers made now after the 11 6, because you don't get coilovers. Yeah, of course. You see, you can't buy. Yeah. So it has to be custom made. Mm. And then we made uh, traction bars for it. We fitted a new stabilizer bar in front. We've added a fourth engine mounting to it. So we did quite a bit of work on the car. Okay, so since at 11, at 11 6 with a, with a goal of going towards 10, you've got those little things that you mentioned now, all things that you've changed on the car in this year. And the biggest thing from all of those, obviously, is going to be 
that gearbox that we spoke about. Definitely, yeah. Okay, Look, so the car was doing decent exit speeds. I mean, I was happy. I would do 190, 194, mm -hmm. you know, for a, a car running bad. a turbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad for a car running a turbo model's gearbox. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's hard for a lot of guys to believe, but yeah. um, the box will be out soon and I'm willing to strip the box, you know. Well, you said the other day, we were chatting about it, the gearbox that you've gotten there now comes out of, out of an Opel 200 TS. That's correct, yeah. Okay, That's, which is also yeah. one of my favorite cars. But I wanted, when I had my 1400 Opel Cub, this was easily, I'm giving away my age here now, but, Easily 22 years ago, maybe, that I had that car. And I was, yeah. living, I was living in Mitchell's Plain. Now, if you live in Mitchell's Plain, you must just go into Pavilion every Friday and Saturday night. And on, uh, a, night like, yeah. on a night like tonight, when it's raining, it's most amateur hour. Then we were just going out <laughs> to the pitch. And it's a front wheel drive. What are you going to do? I just got very familiar with my handbrake. Got very familiar with first reverse and kit. And I would just need tires all the time. I was just doing burnouts after burnouts, waiting for the terrain so I could do so I could do one eighties with a handbrake and first that's all I could that's all I could do with this car. And that's all I did with my fourteen hundred. And I said to my mechanic, I said, Listen yeah, we need to make this car fast. I want to put in a two liter GSI motor. And my mechanic just looked at me and said, Listen, if you want a fast car, buy a fast car and make it fast from there. You can't take a fourteen hundred chassis, fourteen hundred brakes, fourteen hundred suspension and drop in a two liter motor. You're gonna kill yourself. You know, but he was obviously mm. one of those guys, you know, wanted to do it right. You know, so that just, mm. killed, all, that just killed all my dreams immediately. But that was, sure. that's, still, that's still the love that I've got for Opal. Um, yeah, I'm going to pull up one of your runs quickly. So we've got two of your runs here. One of them is for Saldana and one of them is for your quarter mile. So just give me one second here quickly. Here we go. You've got right hand lane. Yeah. Put in the neck on neck and then you start pulling. And there we go. That was 11. That was your 11.6 run down in Kilani. That was my first 11.6 in Cape Town, yeah. Okay. Um, did you do another one after that? that? I think you said you backed it up that day. You did another run after that. Immediately after that, I did another 11.6, yeah. Okay, cool. This next one that I want to play is actually you at Saldana Drags. Here we go. So you've got left lanes on the drags, 800 meters. Dude, and you're pulling train links in the road. Yeah, I think it was the sleeks also that helped me get off the line that day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was driving. I was running uh, with my sleeks all day. Um, I ran with a couple of 2J BMs as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, similar results to the Corolla. What what was your then, what was your top speed that day? My top speed was 225. Uh, then I have a day 225, 224, uh, 223. Mm -hmm. You know, around okay. there. But my highest was 225. Okay, I just find it strange that you're racing slicks at Saldana. I mean, Saldana drags is basically it's not a prep track. It's an airport runway. Mm -hmm. That's what it is every single day. And a lot of guys don't enjoy slicks on that surface. Number one, the surface eats slicks for breakfast. That surface doesn't like slicks. If you go, if you go there with slicks, you're going to waste thousands of rands of money. But you ran it anyway. Did you find that you prefer the slicks to maybe semis or street tires on the, on the top end? You see, the problem is, Jason, we had an issue that day with the car. We tested the car with semis. Mm -hmm. Then when I hit third gear, then uh, the car is loose. I'm fighting with the steering. The back wants to come around mm -hmm. uh, at about 150. And then I tap off. Yeah. And I will do across the line at like 150, 160 because it becomes too dangerous. Yeah. So we fitted the slicks. We put the original wheels in the boot. We put the toolbox in the boot. We tie strap everything to the cage, put yeah. weight in the car. And we went out with the slicks and the car ran in a straight line. Wow. Okay. So, this, yeah. so, so you put the slicks on an added weight basically. I put the slicks on an added weight mm -hmm. because I thought it was the weight. And then I took the slicks off again on the next run, mm -hmm. put the standard wheels back on, and I put the slicks in the back and tie strapped it mm -hmm. as well with the toolbox to the roll cage. Yeah, so and I did, exactly the, I did exactly the same thing in third gear, yeah. wanting to come around and roll. Wow. And, then I, yeah. and then I realized that uh, the arches were too big for the, the semis. 
and uh, so we just ran with the slicks all day. Okay, and that with worked out for in- you. Interesting. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, so next time I go, I won't go with all the weight. Um, I'll just go with the slicks. Mm. Okay, so yeah. So you've been out with that car, Saldana Drags, 800 meters. You've been to Namibia as well. Um, your goal yeah. is to reach tens. Once you get to tens, okay, um, you want to get to, you think, look, you've got the gearbox in. Now, I'll be very honest, I don't know if you're going to get tens with just that gearbox. If you change the gearbox yeah. now and that's all you did, I don't know if it's going to be enough to get to tens. Um, if the gearbox, let's assume, let's just assume the gearbox, you put the gearbox in, the car runs better, you, you can actually use first gear, you get your launches on point. Let's assume you get to like a 11.2. Let's assume that's where you end up. What's going to be your next step to push into tens if the gearbox isn't enough? Well, then I'm going to start uh, scratching on my engine a bit more. Um, like I said, I've got plans to bump the compression. You know, um, I've actually planned on revving the car here with the new cam setup. And higher than I nine. plan on going. Yeah. I rev that thing to I the spoke- blue, huh? Yeah, I spoke to Cat Cams. Uh, the goal is with my compression that I told them about. Uh, what the goal is, I told them where I want to, the, the cams to peak, etc., mm-hmm. and the engine to peak and something. So, yeah, there's bigger throttles also in the pipeline. So, yeah, I've got plans. My goal with the car is 240, 250 kilowatt. Mm-hmm. Is, that's my, my goal. Okay. So, so like still, I told my dad. Still, still NA, 240, 250. NA, Okay. Yeah. In a, um, it's not easy. I mean, no. everybody looks at my car and thinks it was. I've never had it easy, Jason. Mm. I mean, that car has been through six different branches, three different exhausts, uh, four sets of cams, uh, two sets of throttles, different heads, <laughs> yeah. um, different, different engine capacities, I ran bearing after bearing. You know, it wasn't mm. easy. So you did your homework and you paid your school fees because in this game, drag racing, as open mm. as people say they are, I said, no, I'm open, I'll give you, there's things that people are just not going to tell you that you are going to have to figure out for yourself. And figuring shit out costs money. And you've now no, does. done that homework and paid those school fees. No, it does. Look, to be honest with you, I, those that know me, uh, no, I don't hide things. When they ask me and they come, I try and be as open as possible, you know? Because I know no two engines are the same. Hmm. Um, you can do everything that I did, but it doesn't mean that the results are going to be the same. Yeah. And so I try not to guarantee, guys, if you do what I did, it's going to work and hmm. that, you know? Yeah. It doesn't. Um, like the guys that helped me in the beginning said, my car is not supposed to make power. It's not supposed to do this. It's not supposed to. I never listened to them. Hmm. I just kept on doing my own thing. You know, me and my dad. Mm. Uh, we just kept on doing our own thing, and so, that's and that's working for you now. I mean, you're making progress, and you've you've got you've learned a lot during the course of building the car and building the motor. You know where to tweak. So all that experience is actually counting for something. If somebody had just told you at the beginning, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you'll make 250, you wouldn't have learned anything. You know, something breaks, you wouldn't have known yeah. how to fix it. You know that car inside and out because you've changed and you've worked with everything on that car, and that experience counts for a lot. But it counts for a hell of a lot. Yeah, no, definitely. Look, in the beginning, I listened to this one and that one. Buy this, buy that. It's going to work. It, and I can tell you, it almost never worked. <laughs> it almost. Yeah. And then I would go back and I would tell my dad, hey, dad, I've got an idea. Mm-hmm. Let's try this. Maybe. Then we try it and it works. Yeah. Same like with uh, with the branches I had built. I built a spec, which was recommended. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. But believe it or not, that speak worked for a friend of mine with the same capacity engine mm-hmm. uh, at altitude again. Yeah. And my friend gained big power with that very branch that didn't work for me. And I had to go bigger mm-hmm. in order to gain power. Yeah. Now, it's like, this is a very similar story to the previous podcast you did with Brandon Almazano that, 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 uh, the, um, with the two liter eight valve. And he was saying the same kind of thing. Brandon from Profit, I mean, obviously makes branches, yeah. designs, exhausts. And he was saying the same thing. On the Mark One side, he was putting on branches and certain diameters that worked on other 8-valve Mark 1s and it just weren't working for him. And he went bigger and did something completely different than what everyone else was doing and it started working. 
you know, which is what you say. It's, yeah. Every single car is different. You know, it's, it's, they never exactly the same. So you've got to you've got to do experimentation and do the research and see see how it works for you. Look, what I did learn from the branches, um, my lengths and my branch setup, it moves the power band up. You mm -hmm. know, like a friend of mine that uh, I helped. Um, you know, we are very good friends. Mm -hmm. His car used to peak at five nine, and with my branch, the peak moved up to seven thousand four hundred RPM. Wow. This with a branch, mm. yeah. So a branch is very important to an engine, you know. Yeah, of course. It's very, very important, especially the right branch. Yeah. Um, another question, with regards to racing, and we always ask this to all the the guys that are racing out there. You get different kinds of races. You get races that race for time. You know, they chase the clock to try and beat their personal best. You get races that purely want to beat the guy that's next to them. They want to be faster <laughs> than the guy in the lane that's next to them. And you get guys that chase top speeds. They don't care about anything else. They just want to be the fastest over 800 meters or a kilometer or even, mm. even a quarter mile. Which racer are you? What do you want to be? Do you want to take the O's duck next door? Or do you want time or do you want speed? Look, to be honest with you, Sultana for me is about speed. Mm -hmm. So, the, yeah, it's about speed for me. Uh, but Kilani is more personal goal type of thing, you know. Okay. And for Opel as well. Mm. Uh, I know that people don't believe that Opals can do well and Opals can run well. They mm. can, you know, it just takes a lot of hard work. Mm. It takes a lot of commitment and patience as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you, you knock your head a few times. But if you're willing to learn and mm. listen to people that have been through what you're going through, it won't cost you as much. Yeah. You know, so for me, it's just a personal goal. Mm. I'll tell you straight, my personal goal is 10.5 in it. That's my goal. So I will stop when I get there or when I get close to that, then I will stop with the in a uh, car. And then you're going to go move over onto turbo. I've got a turbo engine that uh, is waiting to go in there. Yeah. Oh, so you're ready? You, you're ready? You're just pushing to 10.5 and then immediate swap over? Yeah, we built about a thousand horsepower capable turbo oh. engine uh, a year or two ago. It's waiting to go in now. Which which engine is it, if I may ask? Also Opel. Also Opel. Okay, nice. I can't wait uh, to two that. But it's a two liter. Okay. Two liter, of course. Mm. Also similar setup. Also mm. the head was done on the machine and mm. uh, turbo cams, valves, rev kit, mm. the works. Okay, so that's gonna. You know what? I'm just finding it. I know you don't want to cut in the car. You know, I'm just thinking it's going to be so much easier for you to attain those goals. I know you want to you want to do as much as you can with the car with as much trim as possible, but the seats are already out. I mean, you could save weight on. You've already cut the doors. You got the. You could start putting fiber parts on. You could put a fiberglass bonnet, a fiberglass hatch, um, fenders. You could do all of those things, and it'll save you a lot of weight. And that's gonna you're gonna to get to that goal time of yours a lot easier. Um, is that sort of not an option for you? You're not going to do those things. You're going to get to ten five. No, Look, I've got a fiber hatch on it. It just doesn't look like okay. one, but it's a fiber oh, hatch. Okay. With the legs and window, yeah, it just looks original. Okay. But it's a fiber hatch mm -hmm. um, with the inside as well. Uh, then I've got a fiberglass bonnet that I had made when I did all the front panels, but mm -hmm. I don't like it, so I don't run with it. I like the standard bonnet. Okay. And your fingers? Um, my fingers are fiberglass, are but they're they? heavier okay. than the standard. Yeah, yeah, they're heavier than the standard ones. They oh, just look original because okay. um, they've got every line, every fitting that the original has, they have yeah. as well. Okay, but you also need those to to, to be wired so that you can run those slicks. Yeah, I mean, they've, they are a few years old now. I must actually have a new set made mm -hmm. uh, because we will bolt them on because of Saldana. I used to bolt them off mm -hmm. and bolt on the standard stuff. Now yeah. I can't anymore because of the fuel tank and the pumps. Mm -hmm. So I keep the fenders on. Okay. Um, yeah, but look, I'm going to chase, and the plan is I'm, I want to have an axle made for the back, a chromoly type axle yeah. to help me save weight because that's where I'm going to save the most weight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to remove the dash. I'll see where we can cut, but we're definitely going to cut on the car with a plasma cutter soon. All right, so, okay, so you are, you are taking that into account, the fact that you're going to do a lot more cutting to be able to get to 10.5. You're okay with that, and then go turbo. Definitely, okay. that's the plan. All right. That is um, the plan. Something we never asked earlier on, and I should have actually asked this before. Um, what diff are you running in the front? Have you got a have you got a LSD or, or a fixed diff? 
Was it a complete? Um, I've got a Coif uh, LSD in in the box okay. there. All right. Yeah, I've got a Coif LSD in the box there. I had the normal Vive in, but the car was too wild with it, man. It mm. used to talk to you so bad it will throw yeah. you towards the wall. Oh, and then I took it out. Okay. I had a clutch type in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just way too dangerous. Yeah, oh. yeah, it was too dangerous for me. Mm. Look, Shannon, all I can say is I can't wait to see your car out there again. Like with so many other builds, I mean, there's so many guys working on the cars during lockdown and just before lockdown and then racing was pulled out from under us. There's so much coming um, whenever this lockdown is done. So I'm looking forward to see what you do with that car, but and good luck. I hope the bowl goes well. Yeah, no, it's really, it's a really nice thing you're doing for everybody. Thanks, man. It keeps us busy as well. Yeah, <laughs> keeps us entertained. <laughs> keeps us safe. Yeah. All right, bud. So true. All right. Look, good luck, and we'll chat to you soon. Thank you, Jason. All right. Keep well. Cheers, bud. Okay. Bye. And that was Shannon Isaacs in his 1992 model GSI Opel, GSI Superboss running a 2.4 liter NA motor doing 11.6 second quarter miles. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate it, as always. If you don't mind terribly, would you mind banging on that uh, subscribe button? Share if you found this entertaining at all, and we will try and get these episodes to you at least once a week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Good night. <laughs>